Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. In this video, we're going to go through Elder David A. Bednar's 2018 social media post. We're doing that because I have this playlist that I'm working on uh, where we're just going through all the posts. And We started with President Nelson. We went from 2018 when he became president of the church until 2023. And I'm really glad that I did that because there were a lot of gems that I had missed and certain things that he had only said on social media. And it gave us a really good overview of his presidency, which helped me realize some of the things that he's he's done throughout the years uh, when putting it all together. And so I was thinking of doing President Oaks next, but I, I just felt like I should do um, Elder Bednar. Uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of interesting things about Elder, Elder Bednar. I was actually preparing a list of things to share in this video before going into his post, but there was so much that I think I should do another video there was one re really super interesting detail that I didn't realize until just now about when he became an apostle. Um, so I'm going to save that for a separate video because it, it warrants its own video. But I have noticed over the last uh, few years that it really seems like he has the second coming on the mind. Um, I've done videos about that before. Just do a search on my channel for Elder Bednar. And uh, I've actually done a lot of videos about him because he's done so many interesting things. But uh, one of those things is just how much he's talked about the second coming and different aspects of it. And so I thought that that's why it'd be a good idea to maybe move on to Elder Bednar. So we're going to start with his uh, first post of 2018, January 16th. President Thomas S. Monson blessed the church in remarkable ways. He truly was a prophet of God. I was privileged to associate with President Monson and will forever cherish the guidance and direction I received from him. The resurrected and living Christ directs the affairs of his restored and living church. On Sunday morning, in a solemn meeting in the Salt Lake Temple, President Russell M. Nelson was sustained and ordained as the president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I know the Lord has called him to be the prophet at this time. For years, I've been tutored and strengthened by his strong faith and his inspired leadership. The heavens are not closed. God speaks to us individually and to the leaders of his Latter-day Kingdom on earth. I look forward with great anticipation to the leadership of the, okay, sorry, anticipation to the leadership President Nelson will provide. I know that as we follow his counsel, we will better come to know the Savior and will feel true joy in our lives. And then it has this picture of President Nelson alongside uh, Wendy Nelson. Not sure what that event is, but I like the sunflowers in the background. Okay, January 28th. The Sabbath is God's time, a sacred time specifically set apart for worshiping him and for receiving and remembering his great and precious promises. On the Sabbath, we worship the Father in the name of the Son by participating in the ordinances and learning about receiving, remembering, and renewing covenants. An additional purpose of the Sabbath is to elevate our vision from the things of the world to the blessings of eternity. Removed during this sacred time from many of our regular routines of our, bas our busy lives, we can look to God and live by receiving and remembering the great and divine Sorry, the great and precious promises whereby we become partakers of the divine nature. How has keeping the Sabbath day holy brought you closer to the Lord? I invite you to share a comment below. Okay, let's move on. February 11th, <clears throat> two weeks ago, I invited you to tell me about how keeping the Sabbath day holy has brought you closer to the Savior. I really enjoyed reading your comments. Two responses were particularly instructive. Debbie said, quote, nine days ago, I was diagnosed with cancer. I had been very weak for a couple months and didn't think I could make it to church today. But I went, and during the sacrament, I experienced the greatest outpouring of the Spirit and a witness that this experience is a blessing my Father in Heaven has given me to experience. Every talk and every song and every prayer strengthened me. I'm so grateful for the rich blessings of the Sabbath. It is a day of bounteous blessings, end quote. Preston observed, oftentimes I'm surrounded with swearing, drinking, and smoking. Being able to attend church on Sundays and spend time with like-minded people has brought me so close to our Heavenly Father. Sunday is my most anticipated day of the week. He must be in the military. As Debbie and Preston can confirm, a major purpose of the Sabbath is to elevate our vision from the things of the world to the blessings of eternity. 
Uh, Today, we each find strength, vision, and joy as we honor the Sabbath day. Okay. And he's not putting any uh, pictures with these uh, with these posts. So our Heavenly Father, this is February 27th. Our Heavenly Father's great plan of happiness includes the doctrine, the ordinances, the covenants, and the exceeding great and precious promises whereby we can become partakers of the, of the divine nature. His plan defines our eternal identity and the pathway we, we must follow to learn, change, grow, and ultimately dwell with him forever. What we become is the result of our knowledge of and willingness to learn from the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. It is not merely the sum total of our daily pursuits during a lifetime. And I think that's what some people think, that <clears throat> when Judgment Day comes, it's going to be like a meticulous, um, you know, item by item uh, review of every single thing that you did or didn't do. And, and uh, it doesn't seem like that's the case. <clears throat> okay, moving on. April 1st, 2018. I love and revere the Lord. His power and peace are real. He is our Redeemer. And on this Easter Sunday, I witness He lives. April 10th. The Christ like quality of meekness often is, mu- is misunderstood in our contemporary world. Meekness is strong, not weak, active, not passive courageous, not timid, restrained, not excessive, modest, not self-aggrandizing, and gracious, not brash. A meek person is not easily provoked, pretentious, or overbearing, and readily acknowledges the accomplishments of others. Meekness is a spiritual gift for which we appropriately can seek. As we come Unto you and follow the Savior, we increasingly and incrementally are enabled to become more like him. Yeah, and I want to just like add on to this. It's uh it's strong because <clears throat> the opposite is the natural man, right? You you can either live the higher, holier ways of Christ, or you can go the natural man route. And the natural man route is easy. It's like our default. If you don't do anything, then you're going along with the natural man. You know, it's easy to get angry. It's easy to get jealous. It's easy to whatever. It's just what naturally comes to you. So it's easy. It's natural. It's easy. So you have to do something that's hard to uh, rise above that. So, and it's so, it's so twisted and backwards. Like he says in the contemporary world, how it's portrayed as opposite. Like it's a weakness and they view it that way because, uh, People that live their life according to the ways of the natural man uh, are in a constant mode of competition of everything, whether it's um, mates or resources or, you know, Christmas decorations, you know, uh, putting Christmas lights on your house. Uh, There's people that they live their life where they compete in every single arena because they're living according to the natural man. And so they look at you as like complimenting them like, oh, hey, that's a really good, you did a really good job on your Christmas lights. And they're like, yeah, idiot, yeah, you lost. You, you can't compete with me because they're in, in the mode of competing, whereas you're not playing the same game that they are. You're, you're playing a much holier game where everybody can win and they're playing a game where only in their mind, only they win. So it takes effort to overcome the natural man. Okay, May 13th, wherever we travel, people enjoy hearing from Sister Bednar. Members often tell her, you are just so real. Susan is willing to discuss real situations and challenges that she and others face. She continually shares the light of her testimony in the faith of Jesus Christ. Susan has a light in her countenance that radiates virtue and purity. I am eternally grateful for a spouse who inspires me to improve my relationship with the Savior. Hashtag Mother's Day. Yeah, and you know what? Real. That's something that the natural man is not. Because the natural man is all about defense. And part of having a good defense is uh, trying to get other people to view you a certain way. So you come up with a facade 
and you try and get others as well as yourself to believe in that fake facade and um you know people that are more worldly prideful narcissistic stuff like that they have a hard time talking about real things they don't like to talk about feelings they don't like to talk about shortcomings uh, they have a fear of quote unquote being vulnerable <clears throat> or in other words just having intimate conversation because they can't they can't reveal their weaknesses they don't want to reveal their weaknesses because they they, they uh, strive for perfection they don't um, ever say sorry because if they did then they would feel like they're coming across as weak and if they come across as weak then they're losing you know and everything's about winning and losing for them and so people people that are real they have uh, actual conversations that are beyond just superficial nonsense you know small talk or you know worldly things you know things like oh did you see this game oh did you see blah 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 look at this person's stats um oh this store has a sale right now Th those are not real things it's stupid <laughs> It's not. It's okay to talk about that, but some people only talk about those things, and they never talk about serious things like, you know, uh, parenting struggles or issues within family or feelings of inadequ inadequacy or, you know, spiritual growth and, you know, deep things, th things about the gospel, you know, doctrine. You know, it's just, it's, yeah, <clears throat> I really like Elder Bednar a lot. I always have. And it's uh, for stuff just like this. June 7th, every person who has ever committed a sin, which is all of us, may wonder if he or she has repented fully and been forgiven. Sometimes members question why they remember the sin and the remorse. I was recently in Mongolia and a young adult asked me a question about repentance and forgiveness. I used two water bottles to teach a lesson about these vital principles. I invited the young adults to imagine that the water bottles were filled not with water, but with dark, dirty sand. Uh, if we insert a single clean, pure grain of sand in one end, then a dark grain, then a dark grain sand, okay, then a single dark grain of sand is forced out the other end. Has anything changed? Yes, but not a dramatic, not in a dramatic or easily visible way. As we faithfully and consistently strive to eliminate the dirty sand, then eventually the container is filled with only clean, pure sand. And that is similar to what happens to us in our painful memories of past sins. When we sincerely repent, are forgiven by the Lord, and strive to forgive others, then the atonement of Jesus Christ, the stain of sin is removed, and our garments are washed white uh see alma 521 may you and i truly come into christ and repent with sincerity of heart i pray that we will seek through the savior's atonement to have both clean hands and a pure heart that we may become holy without spot okay <clears throat> uh, july 8th it is my privilege to meet and learn from people all over the world. No matter where I am assigned to go, I receive additional witnesses that God knows and loves his children individually. When meeting with a group of people, I recognize that even though there may be an audience of 1,500, uh, essentially there are 1,500 ones whom the Lord loves. I testify that God knows, loves, and teaches out of each of us individually. Or sorry, re reaches out to each of us individually. His love and comfort are available to each of us one by one. As we have ears to hear and hearts to feel, we will recognize more easily the ways the Lord is reaching out to us. Yeah, and that, and that goes to personal revelation, right? That's something that President Nelson has really stressed, that we need to be able to receive personal revelation. And it requires, uh, you know, just like looking for signs of the second coming, it requires eyes to see, ears to hear, hearts to feel. Like you're, you're sensing things beyond the world. You're sensing communication from, from God. And 
for people that are of this world, all they see is this world. So they don't, they don't see the signs of the times and in their personal lives, they don't, um, they, they, they don't realize when things are happening in their lives that they're coming from God. They chalk it up to uh coincidence or meaninglessness or, or they downplay it, you know, <clears throat> it, it's, it's just sad. We, we have to be able to see and hear and feel otherwise you're not you're it's like you're blind and deaf you know your your senses you don't have senses you're not receiving inputs okay september 27th recently in mexico city a little boy and his father sat down together prior to a meeting i walked toward them and the father introduced me to his son um he introduced he introduced me to his son as elder bednar This boy said, oh, yes, Apostle Bednar. He then gave me a big hug, looked at me and said, where is Jesus? (laughs) I responded to him, "Uh, just like you are, just like you are with your father, Jesus is with his father. I was I was thankful for his tender reminder that the Savior can always be near us if we open the door. See Revelation, see Revelation 3, uh, chapter 3, verse 20, and invite him into our lives. Uh, let's take a look at that book of revelation. That always piques my interest. Okay. Revelation three 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh, will I grant to sit with me in my th- in my throne, even as also as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in His throne. He that hath an ear, oh, look at that! He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. That's neat. Uh, let me just read the chapter heading. He who overcomes will retain his name in the book of life, reach Godhood. And be with Jesus as he is with the Father. All right. Okay. October 6th. The historic adjustments announced today at hashtag general conference have only or have only one overarching purpose. Uh, to strengthen faith in Heavenly Father and his plan and in his son Jesus Christ and his atonement. Uh, Just as a rope obtains its strength from many intertwined individual strands, so the gospel of Jesus Christ provides the greatest perspective of truth and offers the richest blessings as we gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Ephesians 1.10 This vital gathering of truth is centered in and focused upon the Lord Jesus Christ because he is the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6. Only as we gather together in one all things in Christ will firm focus upon him, with firm focus upon him, can gospel truths synergistically enable us to become what God desires us to become and endure valiantly to the end. As we learn and link together revealed gospel truths, we are blessed to receive precious perspective and increased spiritual capacity. The Holy Ghost will enlighten each of us to know how to, how the principle of gathering together in one all things in Christ applies to practical ways to learning and living his restored gospel in our daily lives. Over the past several years, essential principles about making the Sabbath day a delight in the home and at church have been emphasized and reinforced, thus preparing us for the Sunday meeting schedule announced in General Conference. We now have increased opportunities and responsibilities as individuals and families to use our time to enhance the Sabbath as a delight at home and at church. I pray we can recognize the Lord's work as one of the, as one great worldwide work that is becoming ever more home centered and church supported. (coughs) And, uh, we've talked about this a lot. We've talked about come follow me and, um, going down to two hour church. And uh, I feel like it's in preparation for the second coming because you have to, 
you know, whenever you're getting ready for something big uh, as an organization, you usually have to change things and reorganize things and streamline things uh, for whatever the anticipated change is. And um, we've talked many times about the large influx of people that will join the church uh, during the first part of the, the millennium. And so it might be kind of hard for people to just suddenly be thrust into the way that we used to do things. It's easier to do two hours rather than three hours. And then it's important to, um, you know, have this so that they can learn the gospel themselves using the come follow me manual <clears throat> and learn as a family, you know, it, it's, uh, yeah. So those are my thoughts on that. Let's move on. November 1st, I had an experience recently with a young man who explained that he had faith in the atonement of Jesus. Okay. He had, that he had faith the atonement of Jesus Christ was real in other people's lives, but he was not sure how it could be applied in his own life. He often testified of what we know to be true, but perhaps the more relevant question for each of us is whether we believe what we know. There are many who believe in Christ, but do not believe Christ. We believe and come to know Christ as we experience personally the transforming, healing, strengthening, and sanctifying power of his atonement. Believing Christ is trusting that <clears throat> his bounteous blessings are available and applicable in our individual lives and families. Believing him with our whole soul comes as we press forward along the covenant pathway, surrender our will to his, and submit to his priorities in timing for us. Believing him, accepting as true his power and promises, invites perspective, peace, and joy into our lives. I witness and promise we can not only know about the Lord, but also come to know him as we exercise faith in, follow, serve, and believe him. Okay, November 19th. Susan and I were blessed to be with President and Sister uh, Russell M. Nelson at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas last night. It truly was an, it was in an in historic gathering of members and friends of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. At President Nelson's invitation, I spoke briefly at the devotional about the principle of being all in. All in is... In, is a short, simple statement that denotes deep commitment and a strong willingness to be involved. Elder Marvin J. Ashton, a member of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles for over 22 years, once related a story about a little boy who fell out of bed and came crying to his mother's bedside. To her, uh, to her question, why did you fall out of bed? The boy replied, I fell out because I wasn't in far enough. Apparently, the little boy was not all in his bed. <laughs> The principles of sacrifice and consecration provide the essential foundation for becoming all in <clears throat> disciples of the Lord. A sacrifice is a commitment to offer anything and everything we possess for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Living the principle of sacrifice increases our desires to obey God's commandments and for the for the things of righteousness for the things righteousness consecration encompasses sacrifice and much more even a commitment to become dedicated to and, de and developed for holy purposes we pledge to make ourselves fit for use and fully available in accomplishing the work of the lord living the principle of consecration increases our desires to serve bless and love others i invite all of us to ask ourselves this important question am i all in as a disciple of Jesus Christ at Alamo Dome. Yeah, and I think this is one of the big things that's separating uh, wheat and tares. The, the wheat are all in, whereas the tares are divided, you know, uh, to varying, you know, percentages. You know, maybe some people are mostly in, but a little bit not in, or some people are mostly not in and only a little bit in. Um, but as polarization continues, as the world becomes more drunk and crazy and insane, uh, with all these different worldly philosophies, those people that are not all in 
are going to be pulled away and they're going to become uh, completely out, right? And so this is a very important concept right now because it's probably never been as hard as, as it is now um, to be a member of the church because it's like you have to pick one or the other for uh, mostly for social purposes because you want to fit in, you know, you want to fit in at work or at school or with the neighbors or whatever. And um, if they're, if you're surrounded by worldly people, then it's, it's harder to, it's harder to live in both worlds as time goes on. So, okay, let's move on. And it looks like we've, we've reached the last one. December 17th, <clears throat> several years ago, I heard the touching testimony of a young wife and mother of four whose husband was slain in Iraq in December of 2003. The stalwart sister recounted how, after being notified of her husband's death, she received his Christmas card and message. In the midst of the abrupt reality of a dramatically altered life, uh, came to this good sister a timely and tender reminder that indeed families can be together forever. With permission, I wrote, <coughs> sorry, with permission, I quote from the Christmas card, quote, to the best family in the world, have a great time together and remember the true meaning of Christmas. The Lord has made it possible for us to be together forever. So even when we are apart, we will still be together as a family. God bless and keep you all safe and grant this Christmas uh, to be our gift, to be our gift of love from, from us to him to him above all my love daddy and your loving husband end quote clearly the husband's reference to being a part uh, in his christmas greeting referred to the separation caused by his military assignment but to this sister as a voice from the dust from a departed eternal companion and father came a most needed spiritual reassurance and witness the lord's tender mercies do not occur randomly or merely by coincidence uh, faithfulness, obedience, and humility invite tender mercies into our lives. It is often the Lord's timing that enables us to recognize and treasure these important blessings. Wow, that is incredible that that happened. That he that he wrote that uh, in this uh, Christmas card. That 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 is a big blessing from the Lord. And I like this part where he says the tender mercy, the Lord's tender mercies do not occur randomly or merely by coincidence. And again, that's the, that's the worldly way of thinking that things happen as a result of luck, coincidence. Um, and they ignore ultimately what I think they, they realize is true. They just want to ignore it. That it's, it's the Lord operating in the world and in people's individual lives. So while that's it for 2018, um, I'm not sure that he did as many posts as President Nelson, or if he did, uh, they were shorter. President Nelson did a lot of like long uh, posts with a lot of text. But um, Elder Bendar, at least in this year, uh, mostly focused on just like just spiritual principles, not so much like news or anything like that. With President Nelson's, he he talked about a lot of like like news type things, like um, you know, the church is doing this, I I did this, and of course he would mix it in with spiritual things, but it was more like, you know, this is what's going on right now with the church. This is what's going on with the first presidency. Whereas uh, with this, it's most, mostly just kind of like spiritual thoughts um, and then re relaying a few uh, stories. So I'm going to continue with this, though, because I'm curious. I want to see everything that he has said since President Nelson became president of the church. And then after that, we'll move on to somebody else, probably uh, President Oaks at that point. So, um, yeah. All right. Well, that's going to be it for this one. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also make sure to share it and I'll talk to you guys later.